Okay, welcome to this video where we're going to be having a look at an essential paper one skill to be used with speed, distance and time. Now we're going to be having a look at a non-calculator method using a ratio table to work out questions like the one you can see on the screen. Now we're going to have a look at two questions, a typical style of foundation question and also a crossover question, not forgetting that the crossover questions are the kind of questions that can appear on both the foundation and the higher tier GCSE. So with that being said, we are going to get started. Okay, so looking at this question, now when you are looking at speed, distance and time, it might be that you have your own method that you're perfectly happy using. But I'm going to show you a method which is really applicable to lots of different topics and we're going to apply it to this speed, distance, time question and think about how maybe we could use this as well for some other topics. Now this question says that James leaves his home at 7.30 to drive to work. He drives a distance of 50 miles and he drives at an average speed of 40 miles per hour. What time will James arrive at work? Now, hopefully you are already aware that with speed distance time, we are dealing with the formula speed is equal to distance divided by time. So if you know this formula, that's absolutely fine. And you can feel free to use this formula at any point if it's appropriate. Now I'm gonna show you a slightly different way of approaching this where we are looking at distance and time. So if we draw what we call a ratio table, and when we are dealing with speed in our table, we'll have distance and we'll have time. You can put those on either side, but we are going to be using distance and time, what is appropriate in our formula. So for this question, we have this information given to us where it tells us a speed of 40 miles per hour. Now, whenever we are given a speed in a question, we can put that into a ratio table. The distance here being 40 miles and the time being one hour. Now, typically when it comes to something like this, I would write that as 60 minutes. And you can write minutes next to it if you prefer, just so that you know that you've changed that into minutes. Now that right there is exactly what a speed of 40 miles per hour actually means. It means that we go 40 miles in 60 minutes. Now this question says he drives a distance of 50 miles and it wants to know what time he's going to arrive at work, which of course means we're going to need to figure out the exact time that it's going to take him to travel those 50 miles. Now with numbers like this, you might be able to think about a certain proportion of that time and how we would actually figure that out in terms of the distance. But when we are looking at this question here and any other question that might involve speed distance time with or without a calculator, but we're going to be focusing on a sort of non-calculator method for this. Now, in order to get to that 50 miles, which we'll put down here at the bottom of our table, we're going to try and figure out how we'll get from 40 to 50, and we'll just do the same to the other side, and it's hopefully going to tell us what's going to fit into this position in the time. Now, if you know an easy way of going straight from 40 to 50, Without a calculator, that's absolutely fine. It's quite a complex way to think about it, but you might know that that's multiplying by one point and then a certain decimal, which I'm not gonna give away. And that's absolutely fine for you to do so. Typically though, on a non-calculator paper, we would wanna be thinking about an easier way to get there by breaking this down. And this is something that can be applied to lots of topics, thinking about things like reverse percentages where you want to sort of break that percentage down and rebuild it back up to 100%. In this case, we just want to break down 40 and rebuild it back to 50. Now, there's still complex complexities when we're actually thinking about that because we want to know what number is going to go in the middle. And maybe we can go in multiple steps, but we're going to sort of want to divide by something to get down to a number and then multiply that by something to get to 50 which means it needs to be something that turns into 50. Now, just thinking about numbers that you can divide into 40, you could divide 40 by 10, but that would give you the number four, and four doesn't nicely turn into 50. So instead, let's think of another number. 
What about dividing by 4? Well, if we divide by 4, that's going to give us 10. And 10 very nicely turns into 50. Now, however, even though I've spotted something that works, and that works very nicely, divide by 4, we get 10. We need it to, to work on the right as well. So can we divide 60 by 4? Well, the answer is yes, we can. 60 divided by 4 would give us 15 minutes. And for anyone that was sitting there thinking about the sort of proportional idea here, the sense that, well, the extra 10 miles that we are doing there is a quarter of that distance, so it would be an extra quarter, then maybe you are starting to spot something as well. And that's absolutely fine. But essentially, we have divided by 4 and found what a quarter of that distance would be. We could then, just in this particular circumstance, we could actually just add that on to the original, because 40 plus 10 will give us the 50, and so would 60 plus 15 give us that total time. However, that's not always going to work. So to get from 10 to 50, we would want to multiply by 5, and we would do that to the other side as well. So the 15 minutes, we're going to multiply that by 5, and that would give us 75 minutes. And I'll just put mins next to it, so I remember that that is an amount of minutes. So that's how long it's going to take James to do the 50 miles. This particular question does want us to calculate the actual time. So we'd want to write that as a time, 75 minutes is one hour, and from 60 to 75 would be an additional 15 minutes. So that is one hour and 15 minutes. We are starting this drive at 7.30. We'll take it in steps just to make sure we get the proper time. So we'll plus one hour onto that, which would get us to 8.30. And then we will plus 15 minutes onto that, which gets me to 8.45. And that is the final answer for this question, 8.45, adding that hour and 15 minutes on. So that is using a ratio table, and you can see there, at no point we needed a calculator. But there were points where we had to kind of think very carefully about specifically numbers that went into 40, which gave us an answer, which then turned into 50. And not only that, but the right-hand side also had to divide by 4. So there was quite a bit of thought process there, even though I spotted that number relatively quickly, in the moment, particularly in an exam, you'd want to be thinking really carefully about what you could divide by. But that's what we are looking at using a ratio table. I'm going to go over another question as well, which is definitely more challenging than this one, but hopefully this is a method you like and you could apply, particularly if this topic comes up on a non-calculator exam. So let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so this question is more complicated. This is a crossover question, which could appear on either exam. It says here, a car travels for 18 minutes at an average speed of 72 kilometers per hour. How far will the car travel in these 18 minutes? So if we are going to draw a ratio table, which is what we're going to use, we better draw the table. We know it's speed that we are dealing with, so we have a distance and we have a time. The speed that we are given in this question is 72 kilometers per hour. So I would put 72 kilometres on the left, and again I'm going to put 60 minutes on the right. It's even more important that I write 60 minutes in this question because we're trying to find out 18 minutes. So I definitely don't want to write one there. I would leave it in hours if, for example, it said how far would you go in three hours. Well, in that cir circumstance it would be easier for me to leave it as one hour in the table and then just multiply by three. So there's lots of questions that you can approach and use this method to answer. Now in this circumstance, I've got to get from 60 all the way down to 18. So I want to think to myself, and this time we're working on the right hand side, what number could I divide down to in order to then get to 18 minutes? Now I am drawing one box there on the right, however you could do this in multiple steps. And this one is relatively complicated. There's quite a few numbers that go into 72 and 60. For example, we could divide 60 by 2. That would give us 30 minutes, which isn't going to nicely turn into 18. But once we divide it by 2, maybe we could divide it again. Maybe we could divide both sides by 10 and get down to 3 minutes, which does turn into 18. But I'm trying to think to myself, is there anything I can divide down to which will go to 18 in one step? 
Now there's only one number that I can think of going down to, and that's going from 60 down to six. And I quite like that one, because if we go down to six minutes, well, in that case, we're just gonna to have to multiply by three. Now the process for doing that, and the reason I like this one in particular, is because we are dividing by 10. So without a calculator, I do always like that divide by 10. It means that on the left-hand side here, when we divide by 10, we get 7.2. Now, although that seems like it's not particularly nice, especially as we are focusing on a non-calculator method, 7.2 isn't the worst number that we could have to deal with. If all I'm going to have to do is multiply now by 3, well, 7.2 multiplied by 3 isn't awful. I am going to have to work it out. I'm going to have to do that to the side. But once I've done that, I've got my answer. So actually, that wasn't too bad. Now, there might be other numbers that you've spotted that you would prefer to divide by, and that's absolutely fine. I don't think there are any quite as nice as that one. You could divide both sides by 30. However, 72 divided by 30 is not going to be the nicest to do without a calculator. Certainly, if you had a calculator, you would do that, but perhaps you would prefer to use a formula or a different approach if you were using a calculator. So we are trying to think of numbers that we can divide by that are relatively nice to do, considering we're not using a calculator. I need to do 7.2 times 3. So I'm going to do 72 times 3, just to the side, and then I'll put that decimal back in. So 3 times 2 gives us 6, 3 times 7 gives us 21, and then I just need to hop that decimal in one position, and we get 21.6. So over here, my answer is 21.6, and as you can see, it's not a particularly nice answer, but I did say this one was going to be more challenging. So our answer for this question would be 21.6 kilometres. That'd be our final answer, 21.6. And we know it's kilometres because our speed was given to us in kilometres per hour. So do read the speed in the question very carefully. It does give you the units. And it might even say on the dotted line, dot, 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 and then km. If it does, of course, you don't need to worry. But do have a look at the units within the question. Now, there's a part B to this as well. And it says Claire says 72 kilometers per hour is faster than 20 meters per second. Is Claire correct? And you must show how you get your answer. Now in this scenario, it's more of a reasoning based question, but we are actually gonna to have to use a method to actually figure this out. So again, if we think about how we could apply a ratio table to this as well, again, we will have distance and we will have time. Now, in this particular question, we actually have two scenarios. We could put the 72 kilometers per hour into the table, so 72 kilometers in 60 minutes, and then try and divide both sides down so that we get the one hour down to one second. Typically, without a calculator, dividing is slightly more challenging than multiplying. So the other method that we could use is we could put 20 meters in one second and turn the one second into one hour, which would involve multiplying. So if we put that in, and of course you can try both ways, either one is absolutely fine, but if I put 20, I'll put M with this just to express that it's meters in one second, and that's what that speed, 20 meters per second, represents. Now if I want to turn this into one hour, then I want to get it down to 60 minutes. So the first thing that I can do is actually turn this speed or this distance from one second into 60 seconds, which would be one minute. So to get from one second to one minute, I would want to multiply by 60. And that's okay for us to do. 20 multiplied by 60, is a very similar type of calculation that you would have to do when you are estimating, as these numbers are both to one significant figure, the same as when you are estimating. So two times six is 12, and then you have the two zeros. So two times six is 12, one, two zeros, so 1,200 meters. To get from one minute to 60 minutes, I'm now just gonna have to multiply by 60 again. So in this circumstance, I now have to do 1,200 meters 
multiplied by 60 again. That is a little bit more complicated to do, but I do only have to do six, this first number here, multiplied by 12, and then I've got one, two, three zeros that I need to add on. So if I do that to the side, 12 multiplied by six, six times two is 12, and six times one is six, plus the one is seven, so 72. So six times 12 is 72, and then we have the one, two, three zeros to add on, and that's how many meters we will do in 60 minutes. Now it's asked us to compare this to a speed in kilometers per hour. So there are 1,000 meters in every kilometer, and here we have 72,000 meters. So if we were to convert this into kilometers, the interesting part about this question is that 72,000 meters is actually 72 kilometers. So in this particular question, 20 meters for every one second is the same as 72 kilometers in 60 minutes, or in other words, 72 kilometers per hour. So this is a little bit of a strange question because it says here, Claire says that 72 kilometers per hour is faster than 20 meters per second. Is Claire correct? Well, actually, no, Claire is not correct because 20 meters per second is the same as 72 kilometers per hour. So there you go. You can see we've been able to use a ratio table to answer these questions without a calculator, where typically these types of questions would be used and applied using our speed distance time formula. But we didn't have to use any formula. We just used a bit of proportion. So hopefully that's a method that you can have a think about and you can try. If you like this method and you'd like to see more questions, you can always leave me a comment in the video just to let me know that you'd like to see some more questions or perhaps just have some more practice questions that you could apply this method to more frequently. But of course, remember, this is a sort of method that you would only really apply on a non-calculator paper. If you are doing this on a calculator paper, you can still use this method, but you might choose to use your speed distance time formula. But there we go, hope you enjoyed that video, a slightly different method for you to apply. Now hopefully you've got your revision under control and you're making great progress towards paper one. But if you're struggling to know where to start and need to maximize your maths in minimum time, then you should sign up for my rapid revision program, Upgrade, as you can use it to build your very own personalized revision plan. Which means all you need to do is complete my revision quiz and you'll know exactly which lessons or topics you need to work on to maximize your maths in minimum time. This is my paid program, but you can sign up for a free trial on my website now. And if you feel like you need top tier support direction from me, then sign up for my live weekly interactive lessons, which include revision specific lessons focusing on the topics that I expect to appear in exam papers one, two and three. Right now there is a special offer and the next 20 people who sign up for live will get 100% free access to my upgrade program as well which means that you will have complete access to all the best resources that can help you achieve the grades you need to take you onto the next phase of your educational journey.